Welcome to Smart Stewards Money Podcast, financial conversations for millennials and adults. On this podcast, we'll be sharing practical tips and insight on personal finance for both millennials and adults. We'll be bringing in experts and guests from various fields to share their knowledge and experiences on personal and business finance. Of course, we'll be addressing common misconceptions and answering your burning questions about money management. Our goal is to equip you with the knowledge and tools you need to make informed financial decisions about how to make, manage, multiply money, build wealth, and achieve your financial goals. My name is Shola Adeshaki, and I'm going to be your host on this journey. You're in for an amazing time with us. So sit back today, grab a cup of coffee, and let's dive into the world of personal finance together hello friends welcome to another episode of the smart stewards money podcast for young adults for millennials for gen z for baby boomers for everybody at smart stewards we delight in helping you succeed with your finances and on today's episode i have an amazing coach in the house with me she's she wears many hats actually her name is Olaji Mokesheye Oyagbele. She's a business clarity coach. She's a fashion business coach. She's a mindset shifting coach. You get it? And then she is one of our esteemed coaches at Smart Stewards. She's the founder and CEO of 1212 Clothings. Hi. How you doing? Hi, Olaji Moke. Thank you, coach. So <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I, I'm glad I have Olaji Moke here. Her voice rings in my ears all the time. She's very passionate about helping people demystify things that help them from living full lives. She's always talking about, you know what? You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to think about it. You got to... I just love her energy. I'm glad to have you here today. Awesome. And um, I want us to quickly talk about overcoming those limiting beliefs, things that hinder people from maximizing their resources either on a personal level or at a business level but i think the first question i want to ask you is why are you so passionate about people you know ditching limiting beliefs believing in what they carry and going after their dreams tell us thank you coach um so for me i think it's this fear of what could have been right i don't want to so i just imagine getting to heaven and god is showing me a picture of what could what i could have become or who i could have become when i was on the earth or um i see my mate and i'm looking at okay if i had believed in myself this is the possibility i would have gotten or these are the things i would have achieved in my life but then i didn't do it just because i didn't know or something you know um i believe when god said that let there be light god it wasn't this physical light that we're seeing it was let there be knowledge it, it is um let there be illumination you know that's why the bible says that people perish for lack of knowledge so just it's, it's just a little thing that makes people um who they could be it's just a little shift in who they are currently and who they could be but that overcoming you know closing that gap has always been an issue for people and that's why because that was what happened to me the transformation of being able to move myself from a person who could be behind be behind somewhere just you know wasting away and when the transformation happened to me i just had to look that okay i could have been this person who didn't know anything i could have been this person who is wasting away i could have been this person who just got pregnant sit somewhere and is just um, there my life is much more than that i'm impacting other people i'm happy with my life um so knowing that was just one of the things that made me know okay if i could be this then any other person can be and i also look at the people that i see ahead of me i'm like okay they don't have two heads right so what did they do now i just look into that and that pushes me to say if they can do it i can do it and another person can do it all right thank you so much Olajim. okay um just you know taking a cue from what you said i like that scripture that says that now unto him is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or imagine a lot of times we like to ask we like to talk but we do not take ourselves into that place of imagination 
and that's where a lot of things are about it i remember my pastor would say things happen twice yeah. first of all in your mind and then secondly in reality now for somebody who is listening to this and who says you don't know where i have been i've been through a lot many things are happening i do not see myself ditching any limiting beliefs how can i actually ditch limiting beliefs what are the strategies you would you know give to such a person okay so it can be difficult ditching limiting belief because it's by what you see um they say that like 80 percent of what controls the human brain is by sight right so it is a lot of things that you see and you know another thing is that you are an average of the five people around you and that thing is so true right so it is all the people that you are seeing around you that determines what you are thinking it is the places you, are, you have been that determines what you are seeing I mean, the at some point when I decided to, when I started thinking and imagining the kind of business I want to be, it wasn't what I had thought of when I was in my village or when I was with some kind of people. It was at the, it was when I got into some kind of circle, and then I began to see, and then um, also praying helped me a lot. I see a lot of things when I pray. As I'm praying, I am seeing the Holy Spirit is inspiring things in my heart. But much more than that is also uh, yes, the people around me, the things I see. I go on internet and I look at so when I want to do anything one of the first things I do is I ask myself has anybody done it before so I go and look for the people who have done it before but I don't just look for the people who have done it before I look for the best so I, I search things like top 10 people in the world doing the same thing that I want to do or top 5 people in the world I just want to be sure not because I want to be the best in the world or because I'm not driven by being the best or being the first I am driven by I, I want I want inspiration from the people from the possibility so I want to see possibility from the person who has done it before so I go search for them then I come back here and say how can I walk myself into that space so another thing that I do is also affirmation so I create things for myself and I say it to myself over and over and over again this is where we want to go 1212 is a multinational company from from Africa from Lagos Nigeria the headquarters is in Lagos Lagos, but it's a multinational company selling to over 95 um, having over 95 stores in uh, in in different continents those are the things that I say to myself right but one of the most important things that you want to do to your service to one start thinking about changing your circle it might it might be church it might be changing it to a, another church where you see people that are thinking differently it could be starting to go to church it could be joining a program it could be looking for go and search for them who are the best in this place and then you go to them you look at what they are doing you you start your journey no matter how late you think you are those are like few practical ways that you can start changing your mind i love it absolutely change your circle work with affirmations research practical practical things you know that saying i'm, I'm going to paraphrase it that it is insanity to be doing the same things and expecting different results so guys these things are practical you need to change the people that you work with um I, you know i remember a few years ago that um you know my immediate circle of friends some, some somebody amongst us achieved a particular thing and then it became like a wildfire effect amongst the other people because we had seen it happen with one person every other person believed that they could do it so i love it now let's talk about money this mindset thing about money because when we teach money we say okay make manage multiply money but we all know it's a thing of the mind it starts from the mind for example dangote the richest man in africa as at the time of this recording just built the biggest refinery in the world i mean that's such a laudable project that for some of us it could be quite inundating you're like refi let me just be just doing my own thing in my own house because the thought you know what goes into conceiving that idea is totally different from even the resources there are people who have resources but who do not have the mind to do such things now let's bring it back home to our everyday practical lives how do you develop such a healthy and wealthy relationship with money whereby money doesn't inundate you whether you, whereby you're not intimidated by what you see how do you you know what advice would you give <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to start from saying um, one thing that I put in my head every time that to think what you think is to think the truth regardless of appearance. To think whatever you are thinking, right, is to think the truth regardless of appearance. So if you are thinking of that you don't have, 
you actually are thinking the truth regardless of if there's money in your pocket or not and if you're also thinking that you have even though you cannot see the physical cash you're also thinking the truth so again i think in possibilities so it takes me back to what i had said earlier does Dangote have to eat? What were the possibilities? What were the things that were presented to him? So if you say, there was a time in my life where I would, I would see people, I would say, oh my God, they had it better. Their parents were this, their parents were that, maybe. But then I had to tell myself that that's a lie. You know, even if their parents had all of that, I can make it start for, I can make, I can be the parent that will give my children that opportunity. So whatever it is, I'm starting, I'm going to let it start from me. Money is just paper right money is paper you money comes effortlessly money will come eventually you are not supposed to be looking after money you're not supposed to be chasing money so what i do when i am trying to achieve something or when i say oh i need a certain amount of money and i am i'm finding it difficult to reach it i ask myself that there's something there's a mindset that is missing somewhere it is not god this is one thing that has helped me with open mindset i say this god has provided all the things that pertain to life and god is either I do not know what the answer is just yet. So when I'm trying and I can't get it, I say, it is no God. It is no God. So Elijah Moke, what is it that you need to know? So I begin to map my, my journey. I just put paper to pen. I start writing, who is achieving this thing that I don't have yet? I go and meet them. That was the way I met Coachella. You know, I was looking forward to being able to build my business money you know I, I saw that i was spending as i was making i was i'm like i make money but i don't see the money i make but then what would help me i someone just mentioned uh in conversation one day i i went straight on facebook to go and look for her that is the way i look i i do my things is there anybody who has achieved that i am going to give them close marking because i want what they have i go after people i go after um, people things that can give me knowledge things that, that can put light in my in my in my subconscious because if I cannot make that money in my mind, I cannot make it physically. So to think what, what you are thinking, right, is to think the truth regardless of what you see today. This probably will be one of the most important things you would learn about money. I, I, I say it again. If you don't get the mindset right, you are not going to attract the kind of resources that you want. So it starts from the mind. Guys, if you see yourself wealthy, then you will become wealthy. You attract the predominant thoughts in your mind. So you need to listen to this video or this podcast time and again, time and again, and then identify the resources that you need. Some of us, you need to read books. Some of us, you need to um, associate with some set of people. Some of you have to ditch some of your friends who keep telling you that, you know what, you can't accomplish this. Look at Ilda Bassi who... Um, you know, just broke the Guinness World Records for, you know, the longest cooking hours. As I was driving to the studio this morning, I just thought about it, that what gives someone that motivation to cook for 100 hours? It is doable. I remember reading that she said, about the fact that she said the first six hours were the toughest, and she was going to give up. I mean, arguably, I think I saw it somewhere. Like 100 hours just because you had a motivation that I can do these things. And for every one of us, whether good or bad, whatever you set your mind at doing, you will do. You will be able to accomplish it. And I tell people that money is inanimate. You and I are animate. An inanimate thing cannot be smarter than an animate thing. So stop saying my money is this, my money, my money, money problem, money mental problem, issues here and there. You must be able to direct your money and it starts from the mind and like what she has said final question for today how do you align your financial goals with your life values and with your purpose hmm. your financial goals how do you set them and align them i'll give you an example let me let me let me try and unbundle it uh i grew up in a home where yeah middle class but i knew i i loved the baby girl kind of life mm -hmm. My parents could not exactly afford it, but I made up my mind that when I grew up, I would be rich and I would have money give me independence mm. such that whenever I wanted to do something, I'll be able to do it without money being a hindrance. That's my money value. So whenever I set my financial goals, I make sure I am not broke to the extent where 
I don't have that independence. I'm not able to spend. That's what I'm saying. So how do we then align our financial goals and our purpose in life? Thank you so much. So this is quite personal for me, right? Because um, one of the one of the things that happened to me was when I saw my father being insulted because he didn't have money to pay my school fees when I was in um, JS3. What do you call that? Year 9 or something. Now, I felt so bad, right? I was maybe 13. I felt so bad. Like, I cried the whole day. Nobody got what, why I was crying. They didn't even know. My father, you know, everybody felt maybe because I, they didn't know. I couldn't even explain why I was feeling bad. So I made up my mind that, you know what, I'm going to help as many people to be able to give their, their children the life that they want. I want to create employment that will make people to be gainfully employed, not just employed now, gainfully employed. So I work in my business towards having a lot of people, having parents who I can pay well, they can pay their children's school fees. They don't have a problem sending their children to school. Their children can go to good schools, right? So I'm working on my the, the, the business goal in that direction. Um, what prof if we are make if we are not making profit it means that we will not be able to keep um, to keep the business running if we are spending the business money anyhow it means that we will not be able to pay staff salary if we are not so there are a lot of things that you map out for yourself and say what are the things that would help me to be able to fulfill this thing that I've had in my mind? I know that if the business money is not well managed, there is no way the business is going to grow to be able to hire a lot of people. There is no way it's not going to be run down. You know, a lot of things are going to go wrong. So I focus on that. That uh, the goal is always there. Look, I'm looking at it in front of me saying, you know what, this business is for the people. It's to be able to give people better lives. You know, I don't want anybody, I, I just hate that thing that they say they send people home from school because of school fees so if i do i cannot hire children but i can hire people who can invariably you know support their parents or support their children in school Thank so you. good i love it final final question just drop a tip for business owners who are operating in a very restrictive economy like this mm. uh, obviously we're recording from nigeria and it's been a tough year a tough one and a half years actually actually a tough eight years mm -hmm. actually a tough decade <laughs> right what would you say to that business owner who has gone through a lot and who says i'm throwing in the towel um I'm, I'm done mm. you know what would you say to them so i would say pick up that towel back right now <laughs> <laughs> so i'm going to start from there um one of the things is we can all just want to give up but again the people i see I've, I've been able to surround myself with a lot of people i go looking for them because the same nigeria right you see people open opening branches you see people doing a lot more things and i'm wondering so if we're in the same country then there's something they know that i don't know there is something that is working for them that is not working for me that i need to get to work for me so again it takes us back to the mindset to think whatever you are thinking is to think the truth. If you think Nigeria is not working for you, it's not going to work, right? And you are going to just have to throw in the towel. I almost gave up at some point as well. But then I look back and I went back to the drawing board. What did I say I want, right? And that again refired me. But when the fire was not coming like it used to, I went to look at the people that are doing well. What are they doing? So. Please don't don't be discouraged. Don't give up on your dream. You know why you shouldn't give up is because there's a pain that comes with regrets. So you 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 give up and you leave the country and then you go away for years and then you're in your fifties. It's not that you will not be happy where you are, but you know you might you might just wake up someday and see somebody on Instagram doing what you had wanted to do and successful at it, and then you become ah if I I wish I I stayed back to do this. You can still have the best of both worlds. You can still travel the world and actually build a business here it will only take knowledge so please don't give up i love it take the towel back come on <laughs> take it back thank you so much this has been very insightful to be honest this is one of my best episodes because i mean as i was listening i was also meditating and reflecting on some of the things that we are discussing until we see you the next time guys keep winning with your finances remember it starts all with your mindset thank you and check out what we do at smart stewards courses money challenges 
a community to help you with your finances, just head on to www.smartstewards.com. We've got you. God bless.